The King Lake community outside of Waterloo was hit hard by the recent flooding. By air and by truck, rescuers race to bring residents out of King Lake. Today, Douglas County officials, sheriffs and health inspectors are going door to door and seeing whether it's safe or not to residents that continue living here. As many as 15 volunteers were stranded in King Lake. This is the biggest or the worst disaster Nebraska has ever seen. And I'm used to disasters, but here in my hometown, I'm used to seeing what it's like. And uh, I, by, the, by the end of that day, I went, this is bigger than anybody ever anticipated. A couple of us were out rescuing people in airboats uh, just south of here in Waterloo area. And uh, we heard that King Lake was flooded out here. We figured it's gotta be flooded if it flooded where we were at, just a couple miles south of here, it's over five feet that beat the record over five feet. So it was a, a moment where you went, wow, this is okay. We gotta take out what we think is gonna happen here and just understand what could happen. I was just literally standing outside watching the water come up, you know, and it was cold. So, you know, I'd be back and forth, you know, try to strike, you know, but you, you, you're helpless because you can't go anywhere. You know, the only way that you're going to get out is by a rescue. You know, it's devastating, you know, but I mean, there's, a, you know, like my parents, I mean, uh, I couldn't even imagine what was going through their minds, you know, to see everything, you know, in your house, you know, 30 inches of basically about knee height down, um, just gone, you know, just destroyed. Um, the house that we grew up in, you know, it's you know, literally destroyed. It was like a big ocean. All you could see is treetops when you look back towards the lake. And so we just waited, waiting until the water went down. Then the bridges were out and we couldn't get across the river to get back here. It was just a wait wait and see game of if we could rebuild the mud, you know, everything was covered and you forget what you had, you know, you're searching. I found money <laughs> under the dresser um, in the mud, you know, just searching through the mud, trying to find stuff. You know, you got so much going through your mind at that point in time that um, your life pretty much gets put on hold. It just totally changes direction. I mean, it went from being concerned, what are we going to do Friday night, to where are we going to live? And it takes a little bit to figure out where to even start to, be, to begin the, the you know, rebuilding. Um, and the amount of volunteers that came in, you know, that was overwhelming. You know, I've never seen uh, so many volunteers uh, work together people that we've never met, never heard of, um, the groups that came in like uh, Samaritan's Purse, you know, the King's Garden, Omaha Rapid Response. I mean, there's so many organizations that came out here and they stayed out here. And there's some groups that are still every week, you know, continuing to help. I have never, never heard of King Lake before uh, last April. When the flood came, you know, everybody kind of feels the need that, that they want to do something and some people can donate money and um, we didn't have any money to donate, but I can do skills. And we got hooked up with Omaha Rapid Response and ever since then, since August, um, I've led most of the groups up here, but we usually come up about three, sometimes all four Saturdays of each month. and. Uh, since Christmas, we've been just really focused on a couple of houses, trying to get them completely done so people can move in. <clears throat> uh, there's been people living in campers with no water through the winter because their pipes were freezing. Well, we only work on uh, Saturday, just like one day a week, basically eight hours a week is all we come up here to work. And uh, so it, take, it takes us a long time. And that's why we don't always see a house from start to finish. We just kind of fill in wherever we can. Our teams usually do um, like 
small framing. Uh, we put all the windows in this house. So this house got all new windows and then uh, we insulated it in drywall and taping. And we have a couple of skilled carpenters that do trim work. We were blasting. We had, by the uh, end of August of last year, so from this day last year until the end of August, uh, we counted up and we had over 3,000 volunteers from 22 states that came in. From an outsider looking in, it's like, wow, we've got a lot more work to do here, you know. Uh, it's right by the river. The roads were horrific. We had our buddy Larry come out and worked on the roads for, for I don't know, at least six months. And if we didn't have that, the, the, the county came and helped a little bit, but if we didn't have Larry here, people were getting stuck left and right. It was just a mess out here because it's a sandy base soil. And the, the vehicles that were getting stuck were four-wheel drive trucks. So this is a big project, you know. We, uh, just in King Lake alone, we were talking about a couple million dollars to get all these houses back up to snuff. It seemed like every, everything that we did showed more damage than what we ever thought. So in a way, the flood was a blessing because we were able to take and you know, open everything up and fix all the problems. We just didn't want to do it this way. I'm the type of person that um, I'll try to do everything myself. You know, and if I don't know how to do something, I figure it out. I take, I read up on it, whatever I have to do, do you know, do the research and I'll, I'll figure out how to do it the correct way. So when I've got my brother's house, my house, my mom and dad's house, all my friends, you know, everybody down the block, everybody's in the same shape as we are. You want to try to help everybody you can. You want to try and help yourself and you just can't do it. So it's, it's not like a, a sucking up your pride, but it's just the admitting that you just can't do it. That was the hardest part for me. I can't do it all on my own. You get real emotional over it because it's literally a ton of blood, sweat and tears. I mean, realistically, because we broke down, we cried a lot. There was a lot of sweat involved and there's a, you know, a lot of blood that shed with, uh, you know, getting stuff ripped open and everything else. So it's a true statement of blood, sweat and tears. Take and put everything back together. And uh, fortunately, my situation allowed me to uh, leave my job and focus on getting this house put back together. My mom and dad's put back together and uh, get them, you know, get everybody back. It's a total lifestyle change, you know. Um, sitting here thinking about, okay, well, what's the next part of what we're gonna build? What's, you know, we're still doing the rebuilding process, so, you know, we might take some time, you know, like on a Friday night, we might get that normalcy back of, well, what are we gonna do tonight? You know, um, might go out, hang out with some friends, go over to somebody that just got moved back, take and hang out over at their place. Um, we didn't really get, haven't really got back to our normal life yet, but we're, we're getting closer. We're all wore out. Everybody wants to take a nice long vacation, but um, you, you just gotta keep moving forward. It's the only way you'll get a chance to take a vacation and relax. Mary and Ted, um, they are the, 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 the couple that we as a Messiah family and also just me personally, but as a church body, we've developed the biggest relationship with them because we worked on their house the longest. And before that, you know, we could go onto the property, we go into the house, but we were, you know, cleaning it out with the mucking of getting all the destroyed furniture and things out of the house, cleaned it out and we had, um, a bunch of volunteers come out and help from all over. And we were able to stay there and finish the whole, basically finish the whole house. So, so they are, they become like just true friends. And she invites us in her house every Saturday and makes this gigantic big home cooked meal every Saturday. It's uh, amazing some of the things that they've done for us. I mean, it just actually just Look at this place here, it was nothing but a just, uh, all you could see is uh, dirt down underneath the house there. King Lake is kind of a closed off community. People live here for a reason because they want to be left alone, right? They don't, they don't want to be bothered by outside influences. They just want to live their life. And so they're like, it's a closed off community. It's a poor community. I lived here for 35 years and there's people down here I never talked to before, never met. When my kids were alive, you know, they knew everybody, talked to everybody, and we just, you know, 
kind of stayed to ourselves. But now we know quite a few people down here with Crown. This incident, you know, the flood, and it has brought everybody closer together. Yeah, for sure. I'm not afraid to, you know, help out, ask for help. People that never wanted anybody or wanted help or didn't want to associate with people, all of a sudden they needed help. Here it's uh, this community stronger now. The, the, they see the light at the end of the tunnel. We've got a lot of people back in their homes. We've got a lot of people that are in their homes, but we're not done with their houses yet. Uh, rapid response is all about relationship. We don't just blast in and then, hey, you know, here we're here to save the day and we're gonna go and do this and do this. We actually go in and our main concern is the victims. Who are, the, who are those in greatest need? And so we want, to, uh, we want to focus on what their needs are. And we may think, we'll come in there and after a tornado they need a roof or after a flood they need to get mucked out. We know that's for certain. But if you just sit and talk with the victims, you'll find out that sometimes they'll go, oh, well, no, I don't, yeah, I don't care about the mud or I don't care about the roof, but my great grandmother left her jewelry, we had, I had her jewelry and I can't find it. It floated away or it got blown away. Can you help me find it? And so we'll just drop everything to help because that's what they need. Now we know other things that they, we need, so we're gonna address their physical needs, but we're more concerned about their mental, emotional, and spiritual needs. So it really pulled the community together. I think there's a lot of neighbors that help neighbors that never thought about helping each other before. So during the Thanksgiving season, we had a big meal for these people and people that didn't had never talked to each other and their neighbors and they never talked to each other or they hadn't seen each other for years. You know, they came together as a community for this Thanksgiving meal and, and that just like opened doors and changed hearts and softened hearts. It, it really um, brought people together. People that you would have never thought um, would ever help. Turns out that they may have been some of the biggest helpers out here. The King's Garden and all the gatherings that they've had over there and how they put everything together. Um, they've helped bring a lot of people together and it's, it's made a big difference. So, and uh, by the grace of God, we're all getting through this together. The people that live outside of King Lake, you know, they always looked at King Lake as um, not a very good place to live because of the drugs that were going on down here. And they thought we were all drug addicts. Being in law enforcement, we didn't like coming out here because it used to be a biker bar here and just a bad place to come. And it's not that way anymore. These are our neighbors. We may not know all of them. You know, I, I knew a few of them out here, but we may not know all of them. And so we actually were able to shine a light on some of the darkness that was in this area. You know, people were wanting to live off the grid. They didn't want to deal with people. And now they're having to deal with people. And it's been really good because people realize, wow, there are people out there that care and that love on them, you know? And, and so we're so thankful to, that God would send us here because the miracles we've seen from what it was before to what it is now, you can't even describe it. Home is us too. Wherever he's at, I'm at, you know, that's home. Peace of mind. It doesn't have to be here, it can be anywhere. It's good now that we've got our actually our house back in there and that's peace of mind on that's that. better than it was right knowing where you can be your own house you can't you can do the things i want to do that i haven't done since then it's a long time it was a long time doing 